Sunspots, Chapter 1, Part 2 The plans are in motion, Luna, Shifting remarked, giving his mare friend a nudge on the shoulder. We'll be ready to go in a few hours. A full-face respirator covered the stallion's features, the commander of the Lunar Knights taking no chances. His elite squad was clad in similar protective gear over their armor, as they packed up supplies, notes, communication crystals, and other miscellaneous items. Squad leader Silty Stone waved a hoof, the Thestral Mare indicating yet another batch of supplies was bound into large cargo nets and ready for mass teleportation to the remote site. Thank you, Shifting. Luna murmured, her troubled expression softening as Shifting nuzzled her neck ever so briefly. Are you alright? I do not know. She admitted, the concern in Shifting's gaze booing her spirit slightly. I must help my sister though, and I think I'll feel better once I know what is troubling her. This is the first time since my return that she has let me help her in this manner. We'll await your return, Luna. Luna nodded, her horn lighting up with power as the dream realm yanked her consciousness away. It was an easy matter to find her sister's dream. Swirling with dark tendrils and chaotic pulses of magic, Celestia's subconsciousness was only now visible to Luna's power. The numerous blockades and shielding spells yielded to Luna's touch, the Princess of the Night slipping into Celestia's dreams as the protective barriers let her pass. It wasn't a full nightmare yet, but well on its way. Now then, sister, what can I do to help you? Luna's vision cleared, but only slightly. Grey dust blew this way and that, and the princess's hooves crunched across the rocky surface. No, not rock. Countless skeletons littered the ground, and Luna's heartbeat immediately doubled at the sight. The depressive atmosphere sparked at the darkest corners of her mind. The apocalyptic landscape something out of a horror novel as bones carpeted the formless rock under hoof. What is this? This darkness, all of death? What have you been hiding from me, dear sister? The dust cleared as Luna continued to walk, the storm swirling around a familiar alabaster figure. Sitting on a slab of grey rock in the middle of a small clearing amidst the bones, Celestia looked out into the storm, the decrepit outlines of a city visible through the dust in the distance. However, no other shape was visible in the dusty scene. Gone. Every creature gone. Twilight. You two? Luna, where are you? With shifting, perhaps, but that, that is good. Celestia murmured, causing pity to ache in Luna's heart. I would never abandon you, sister, and neither would shifting. But perhaps that is your fear. Is any pony, any creature out there? P please? The once proud solar princess begged, sagging to the ground as her sides shivered with sobs. Don't leave me alone again. Luna? Anyone? It was Luna's turn to be brought nearly to tears, her sister's pain hitting her as hard as any mace or arrow to her heart. Celestia, have you truly hid a thousand years of pain from me? Concealed this agony from those who want to help you? Why would you let yourself be tormented like this for so long? Pride? Embarrassment? Did I also not teach you to have lucid dreams? Why would you not employ such techniques now? As her horn began to glow, Luna felt odd twinges at the edge of her awareness, Celestia's mind creating something. Wait, what is this? A counter to the nightmare, or perhaps the trigger? The dust ahead of Celestia parted, and a strange figure strode through the storm. Standing as tall as the alicorn, the creature lacked definite form or shape, instead a swirling mass of light blue energy. The only two defined features were two eyes, their color shifting every few moments. Gentle, caring, and determined, the gaze of this figure caused Celestia to raise her head ever so slightly. Even she does not know? Perhaps that aspect is most comforting. To Luna's surprise, the figure walked steadily forwards, sitting in front of the prone princess. It didn't say anything, only leaning down slightly. Luna's eyes widened as the creature wrapped Celestia up in a hug, two arms forming to pull the alicorn close. The princess's response was immediate, the alicorn relaxing into the figure's arms, her hooves holding the figure's arms tightly. Please, don't leave me. The desperation in Celestia's tone threw Luna off balance, her older sister turning to rest her head against the chest of the figure. A hug? A caring touch? Such a simple thing. But that is what desperate desire eases your pain? Sister, how long have you suffered this torment? Is this an extension of that brought on by Shifting and I? Uh, no, it, it has always been here, hasn't it? As you once told me, you were just able to ignore it until Shifting and I became closer. Would controlling your own dreams make this burden easier to bear? 
Or perhaps would it make it hurt all the more, knowing it was not real? The dust storm suddenly began to intensify, starting to tear the magical figure apart. No, please! Celestia whispered, Luna's eyes narrowing slightly as shadowy tendrils crept into her awareness. Oh, this is how the nightmare begins. This is an easy fix. A little much here and there. Luna smiled as the dust storm began to fade, the figure solidifying back in her permanence. Sleep well, sister. As her vision shimmered, the real world returned to her sight once again. Luna looked up into the concerned face of shifting, the stallion's ears pinned back in worry. Luna, are you alright? He asked softly, prompting a nod. Yes, why do you ask? It looks like tears were about to fall from your eyes. Luna swept a hoof across her vision, noting a bit of dampness indeed. It is personal shifting. Her loyal cold friend nodded once, sitting down beside her with a clank of his armor. Then I will not press. I'm here to talk, if that will help though, once we're somewhere private. His words prompted an immediate half-hug from the alicorn, Luna's jaw clenching slightly. Is that what you have needed, sister? Someone to talk to? A friend? Some creature to care? I know that as your sister, that has limitations. Luna put those thoughts out of her mind for the time, instead enjoying the touch of the stallion that she cared for as he leaned into her embrace. Perhaps in time I can help you further. However, let us get through this crisis first. I'll be right back. Shifting? Luna mentioned as she stood up. Thank you for being here. The stallion raised a confused eyebrow at her words, shrugging his sturdy shoulders with a smile. Nowhere else I'd rather be. For the first time in many, many weeks, Celestia slept peacefully. The burning in her lungs was absent as she sat in a beautiful meadow, a warm rain drizzling down upon her. The slightest breeze shifted flowers and surrounding trees this way and that. The sun shone through a smattering of clouds, making the scene sparkle with rays that danced across the faces of flowers and leaves. Cradled in the arms of a faceless figure, the alicorn let a genuine smile dawn on her tired features. The masks that she wore had no place here, their weight no longer dragging on every expression or emotion the ruler curated or felt. How long has it been since I could do this? Not worry about how I appear, how I act, how every word I may say is construed. How long has it been since I've been able to be myself? Do I know what that is anymore? The warm rain wet her coat, and the steady pressure of the drops making Celestia sigh happily. How long has it been since I've let myself wonder such things? About my life? About myself? The figure that held her radiated a warmth that spread through its eyes, the embrace tightening slightly as Celestia looked upwards. The rain that fell on her face made it feel as though every care in the world was sliding off her fur with it. Tears went unseen by all except her comforter whose eyes didn't judge or condemn, only responding to her needs by hugging the alicorn closer, a spectral arm wrapped around her torso. Maybe I don't know who I fully am anymore, but I want to remember. Yet it's all clouded. It was only in times such as this that Celestia let genuine sobs shake her frame, the impact from a thousand lonely years resonating in her unconsciousness. At the back of her mind, there was the itching realization that it was all just a dream, but that thought was locked away as deep as the ruler could bury it, far beyond her conscious mind at this point. I don't know who you are, but thank you. The spectral figure let out a soft hum, reaching a flowing limb up to brush Celestia's cheek tenderly, resting there as it gently wiped away the wetness under its touch. Her violet eyes widened in surprise, more tears now flowing steadily down her white fur. An emotion was present behind the rainbow gaze of this unknown creature in her dreams, and that shook this stoic ruler to the core. It was something that she never, if not rarely, seen in the eyes of her subjects as they spoke with her, unclouded by alternate intentions or simple courtesy. That realization frightened the vulnerable alicorn more than any physical threat. The knowledge that the simple question behind some spectral eyes hadn't been genuinely asked to her by more than Luna in what seemed to be decades, if not more. The eyes in front of her asked a single question, genuine worry behind the creature's gaze. Are you okay? The only reaction Celestia could give was a whimper, her head shaking as she sought to drown the answer in a comforting embrace. It was the answer to that question that scared her, because it meant admitting something that she was forced to ignore for a millennium, all for the sake of her ponies. How do I answer such a thing? I am okay. That, that isn't a total lie, but a lie nonetheless. Why is it that teaching others to ask for help comes so easily, and yet for me? Such musings were cut short as Celestia shook her head, losing herself in the arms of a dream that sought to alleviate her troubled mind, if for but a time. How long has it been since I have felt this safe? 
The answer to such a question was left unsaid, Celestia once again leaning into the embrace of the spectral figure. There was a strange comfort being held by a creature as big as oneself. She closed her eyes, letting her mind drift into the warmth that only a tender dream could provide. The arms held her close, convincing her if for but a moment, everything was okay. Luna crept into Celestia's room, letting out a slight sigh of relief at seeing Celestia slumbering peacefully. Her expression shifted to that of surprise, and then to pity at the sight of her older sister. Oh, Tia. Celestia held a large pillow tightly in her hooves. Her body was fully wrapped around the plush object as her face was buried into its exterior. Tears ran freely from the alicorn's closed eyes, sides shaking softly as the ruler cried in her sleep. We're here for you, sister. We'll get through this. Luna whispered, making her way to the door. You don't have to fight alone. We're here, Tia. I hope you know that. As she closed the bedroom door, Luna looked up to find Shifting sitting a short distance away, no doubt wanting to ensure everything was alright. However, he had kept his word, and clearly not followed or even tried to listen in on the past events. Of course you did, my loyal stallion. Honesty is one of many qualities that makes you so attractive. Luna walked over to him, pausing in the empty hallway for a moment. She reached a hoof over to hold his, the contact stirring emotions that she sought to keep under lock and key until moments they were truly alone. She is hurting, Shifting, and I don't think I can help her. Luna whispered, voice cracking slightly as a comforting squeeze was her cold friend's response. You couldn't fight my battles for me, Luna, but you were there for me. Sometimes that's all we can do for those that we care about. Celestia's no difference, no matter how difficult that may be. Luna smiled, reaching down to give Shifting a brief hug as they walked back to the storage room. Thank you again, Shifting. You are most welcome, Luna. Now, let's get everything set. Deep underground, beneath countless layers of rock and metal, a lone figure walked throughout a domed room, deep in thought. Newspapers lined the stone wall, each methodically placed in chronological order. Notes scrawled on parchment were tacked next to each, numbers matching a map that was hung to the conglomeration of information. Cities were given ever-high tallies, erased on a nearly daily basis as new rates of infection streamed in. A large and elaborate chemistry set bubbled away in another corner of the room, the occupant then staring at the newest report that had appeared, with a magical pop on a large wooden table. Two bright ocean blue eyes scanned over the headlines, then widening in horror. Firelung pandemic worsens, Cantrelot nearly paralyzed. Princess Celestia appears to cough and wince in pain during the day courts. Is our ruler sick? What does that mean for our city, our nation? Princess Luna leaves for undisclosed location yesterday, details not released. See below for updated steps on how to keep you and your loved ones safe. Two massive side satchels were donned, the container stuffed to the brim with various supplies and instruments. The glow of a magical portal then lit up the stone room briefly, vanishing as the sole occupant stepped through it. So the mystery person is finally stepping out of its hole. Now we just need to find who exactly they are. Now let's get on to our sunny donators. Top donators are 630, Peter Coltar, J10 Man, Darkside, Only One Thing, and Dash of Evergreen. Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, CrazyKiller557, Stu Hex, Sword Brother and Morjid, Omicron Library, Will, Chris, Tomiki, Hadzaza, Riot Soul, Maverick, and many more fantastic people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.